now with all of this right with whatever we have understood of this so far let's go forward and take up one specific example that i'm going to call something called list based scheduling right so what i'm going to do over here is to consider a case where i have a resource constraint okay so what do i mean by a resource constraint i'm telling you that you are only allowed to use two hardware multiplier units and one adder unit okay so already you would be able to you know straight away look at this and say that for example the asap schedule cannot be met right because the asap schedule required for multipliers and uh, you know uh, two adders right i have only two multipliers and one adder available over here by the way let's do the same kind of computation for the alap right if i look at the hardware requirement right so the hardware will basically say this is 2m 0a right this would basically once again say two multipliers and zero adders this would also have two multipliers but now two adders right this would have zero multipliers and three adders right and the max would essentially be two multipliers and three adders okay so it's interesting you compare this against what we had for the asap right this required four multipliers and two adders so which one is better assuming that a multiplier is you know larger and more expensive than an adder it looks as though alap is better right but that's just a coincidence it happened to be the case over here but in general that's not always the case right and more importantly even alap at the end of the day requires like two multipliers and three adders it's not clear that this is the minimum that you can use in order to get to this four clock cycle or four cycle uh, uh, iteration schedule okay so if i go forward over here yeah so with this resource constraint of two multipliers and one adder i'm going to go ahead and see how can i actually schedule all of these operations okay so i'm going to create two boxes right so one box i'll call ready box or a list right so the, i'm actually going to call these as lists the reason i'm drawing them as boxes is because initially at least i don't want to worry about the order in which the operations are sitting inside the uh, lists okay now what would you think should go into the ready box at the start of the schedule it would basically be all the operations that have all their dependencies already met right and sort of once again intuitively we know that you know based on the asap that would be these guys m1 m2 m4 m6 and a4 right all of these operations basically have all of their dependencies met they are ready to go so i can put all of them into the ready list everything else i put into the waiting list okay until some operation has been scheduled and moved out the other operations that are in the waiting list will remain over there okay so now what do i have i basically have two hardware multipliers and one adder which means that even though i have m1 m2 m4 m6 all ready to go i can't execute all of them okay i have to pick two right what i'm going to do over here is i will pick m1 and m2 right now intuitively you know you probably already see why i picked m1 and m2 right it makes sense to sort of have picked those but one thing i want to mention over here is even though you know m1 and m2 are on the critical path and it looks intuitively obvious that you should pick those it turns out that that is not really sufficient always to give you the best possible schedule right there can be situations where just taking that greedy decision saying that you know m1 and m2 are ready they should go on to this because they are on the critical path right may not be sufficient in order to give you the best possible schedule i'll try and motivate that with some examples later for the time being just you know at least it's a reasonable choice right m1 and m2 so now what happens after i have put m1 and m2 in time step 0 and a4 also in time step 0 the next thing that i can see is because m1 and m2 finish by time step 1 m3 is now going to be ready right m3 is also something that i can put into time step 1 if necessary 
So basically it moves into the ready list from the waiting list. Similarly, A5 also moves into the ready list from the waiting list. Okay. So now this is what my new set of lists look like, right? Question once again comes up, how should I, and or rather which operations should I choose to happen in time step one, okay? I'm going to choose M4 and M6, okay? And as far as addition is concerned, there is only one operation uh, that is available over there, A5. Therefore, I schedule it on the adder and move, move on, okay? Now, what happens once M4, M6 and A5 are scheduled in time step one, it means that M5 moves into the ready list, A3 also moves into the ready list, okay? Which means that, you know, once M5, A3 were in the ready list, M3, M5, A3, they were all ready and can straight away get scheduled, okay, at time step two. Once they are scheduled, A1 will move into the ready list. It gets scheduled at time step three. A2 moves into the ready list and gets scheduled at time step four. And this is the end. Okay. So in other words, I've managed to come up with a complete schedule. So the first thing that you can see is it required five time steps. Whereas the critical path was equal to four. Okay. Given my hardware constraints, was it even theoretically possible to finish within four time steps? And the answer is no, because I have only one adder and I need to do five addition operations, right? If I need to do five addition operations and I have only one adder, it means that no matter how clever I am with my scheduling, I will require five time steps. Okay. So keep that in mind, just because your critical path is equal to four does not necessarily mean that you will be able to achieve that as a uh, target, right? It also depends on how much hardware you have av available to you, okay? So now as an example, I want to illustrate what happens if we take this, you know, let's say I solve that problem. I say, okay, fine, use two adders, okay? Now what happens, let's go further with this, right? I'm going to sort of, you know, the approach that we are using. So I'll just run through it a bit more quickly. Once again, I have a ready list, which is the same, right? M1, M2, M4, M6, A4. M1, M2 and A4 get scheduled at time step zero, right? There is only one addition, so I don't really have a choice. I can't really put anything on A2, right? Now M4, M6, M3 and A5 are all in the ready list. Pick, now, now the question becomes, what should I put onto the two multiplier hardware, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick M3 and M6, right? Why did I pick M3 and M6 over here? What else could I have chosen? We'll get to that in a moment, right? But if I pick M3 and M6, and of course A5, which was also available over there, this is what the schedule ends up looking like, okay? In the next time step, M4, A1 and A3 are ready. I have enough hardware. Go ahead and put all three of them, M4, A1 and A3. Should M4 go on to, you know, the hardware unit M1 or M2? I don't care, right? Maybe that will make a difference in terms of the actual implementation at some point. But right now, all I know is I find I, there is a free hardware unit. And I'm saying I'll just pick one and put it on that. Okay. So I do this. Now M4 goes in over here. M5 goes in to the next clock cycle, right? I uh, don't have any addition operation free at that point, right? And finally, what I do is A2 goes in over here, okay? So once again, I end up with a situation where T is equal to five, right? And the question that I'm asking is, look, I got rid of that problem that, you know, the 
number of adders was not sufficient, right? In principle, I should be able to finish the additions in less than four clock cycles, right? Provided that I can do two at one shot. The point is over here, I actually have two additions, but over here I have none, right? So what happened? Why did I end up, despite all of this, having like, you know, some poor utilization of my hardware and something getting pushed into the fifth clock cycle, right? Let me look at another alternative, right? I'm going to start with exactly the same thing, M1, M2, A4 scheduled in time step zero. But now what I'm going to do is, instead of picking M3 and M6 and putting them onto the multipliers, I'll pick M3 and M4 and put them onto the multipliers, okay? And A5 also can happen in parallel with that. Now what is ready? M5, M6 and A1. Do I have enough hardware? Yes, all of them can execute at that time. Okay. Now you see the interesting thing on the ready. What do I have sitting on the ready list? A3 and A2, right? No dependencies between them. A3 and A2 both get scheduled at time step three and I finish in four time steps total. Okay. How did this happen? If you go back and you know look closely at the sequence of operations that we had, you will basically realize that you know this M6, A3, this combination, I have pushed them as late as I could, right? And because I pushed them as late as I could, I did M3 and M4 early. Whatever was on the critical path and something adjacent to the critical path, I ended up, see M4 was not on the critical path, right? But still, because I ended up pushing M4 down in the previous situation, right? I ended up taking five time steps overall. Whereas by doing M3 and M4 up front, I find that I'm able to get the entire thing fitting within four, uh, four cycles. Was this a coincidence? Was there a way by which I could have, you know, always said, yes, you should choose M4 in time step one rather than M6, right? And after all, if I look at it, you know, maybe I could have found that yeah, M4 looks more critical than M6 in some way, therefore I should have chosen it earlier and so on. The point is, at the end of the day, there is no foolproof method by which you can say, yeah, you know, this should be the right choice at any given point in time. Okay. All that you can do is to say that maybe I will give certain priorities to different operations and try and pick them in certain order and hope that everything falls in place correctly, right? It can in fact be proven that you cannot get a completely optimal solution in polynomial time. In other words, this scheduling problem is actually NP complete. But for the time being, I just want you to sort of observe that how we could go about doing this uh, list or set based scheduling and what are the different ways in which I could have ended up with different architectures, right? Remember that, I mean, this after all, what I'm drawing over here, even though I'm calling it a schedule is actually also the architecture, right? Because these numbers, right? Uh, operation number M1 uh, goes into time step zero on hardware capital M1, uh, M3 goes into time step one on uh, hardware capital M1 and so on. Those are the folding sequences. They are telling you precisely which operation goes onto which hardware at which time instant, right? which means that you can now go ahead and compute all the df values that you want make sure that this is a valid schedule and then construct the hardware you know put in one piece for capital m1 one piece for capital m2 one for capital a1 one for capital a2 and connect up all the wires and switches in such a way that the entire system will work